So comment, subscribe, dislike, or like. Check out the links in the descriptions for other of my um, sites, other activities that I'm involved in. Got a whole bunch of Facebook groups you can check out. I play multiple card games, so I do music among other things, so check out the links in the description. Oh, Dragon Ball Super Masterclass Lesson 36, Built to Compete. Or built to be competitive. Um, what's ironic is some some people would, would disagree, but also will, will assume that my decks aren't uh, competitive or aren't meant to be competitive. But for me, competitive play and casual play are are, are very. There's very little difference between the two the two types of way of playing. I'm not going to go into the you know full details of what separates competitive play from casual play, but to me, there's very little difference. I I play to win regardless if it's competitive or casual, All right? So I build my decks to win the game regardless of if I'm playing casually or competitively. You know, I can win, you know, in a fun way. But ultimately, I still win. That's the idea, is to win. The goal is to deal your opponent 8 damage, right? Or to mill them out. Or, I don't know, annoy them in the game long enough. <laughs> or troll, right, as some people will say. Uh, long enough for them to be like, alright, I scoop. <laughs> and that has happened. Some people just decided to not continue the game and just scoop. That is, you know, three of the ways you can win. Um, there are, there is the auto win con. Obviously, there's decks that have the ability to uh, meet a certain condition and automatically win, right? So we got burn as a win con, right? Um, you know, because it, it just leads to your opponent having zero life, right? Then there's mill. Your opponent is running out of cards in their deck, and then you know, you could just like hand loop your opponent, right? You could just um, Take a whole bunch of cards out of your opponent's hand. They'd be like, "All right, I'm not gonna continue, you know, grinding out this this game top deck and trying to trying to make a comeback. I accept defeat. You know, that could happen, right? They could just scoop. So you can win just because because of that because your opponent ran out of uh, resources and hands. Ultimately, they decide to uh, give it up. So that's some some of the stuff with winning, right? So, like I said, regardless if you're playing competitively or casual, the goal should be to win. But, of course, have fun, right? Enjoy it. I mean, you should be enjoying playing playing the game. The game should be fun, you know, up to the point where, you know, win or lose. That way, even if you do lose, right, it still was a great game. It, it, it wasn't a waste of your time, right? Because it was a great game, right? That's why we like to say GG, right? Um, we say it ironically some a lot of times, but you get the point. It's like, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, it is a game. So here I have a couple, of, uh, a list of couple of things that I take, I consider when I'm building a deck. Um, because again, okay, so I consider myself a competitive casual, and what that means is that I do build my decks to be competitive, right? To play in events and tournaments and stuff like that to play. To win, right? Um, so I streamline the decks. I try to make the decks as um, consistent, as efficient, right, as as possible. A lot of people disagree, but that's that's their viewpoint. Um, but I try to make sure that the deck does what I designed it to do. And then the whole idea is, as a player, you use those cards to uh, uh, produce that outcome. Right? It's like it's like I give you the tools to you know build build a car. You still gotta have the skills to build a car, the knowledge to build a car. You gotta understand how to build an engine, how to build the, you know how to how, how to how to build a frame to put the tires on it and, and all that stuff and you know build build a car, right? It's just like yeah, I can give you all the pieces for a Gundam, right? I use that analogy instead to build a Gundam model. You still gotta know how to build stuff. You still gotta know how to how to clip. 
you know, the pieces out, how to glue pieces together, how to paint it, and, and all that good stuff, right? You got to know how to do stuff in order for all that, all, all the supply to matter. A deck is, is that, is a supply, right? Here's what you need to win. It's up to you to win. You can misplay and that's why you lost. Random, you know, you shuffle, you didn't shuffle your deck good enough, so that's why you lost. Uh, you charged the wrong card as energy. You comboed off the wrong card. So many different things that can lead to you losing. Think about it. mathematically, there's more ways for you to lose than there is for you to win. That's the irony of that. There's more ways for you to lose, which is why we'd be like, oh, you, you know, uh, you won by luck, or uh, lucky you, I drew bad. You know, even though I'm mulligan, still drew, you know, still didn't get good cards in this and third, or I, I missed a draw when I activated an effect, and I should have drew. But I missed it. That, 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 that's the reason I lost because I was 5k combo off. And if I drew, I would have had that extra 5k I needed. You know, factors like that, stuff like that. There's more, there's more uh, chances of you losing than there is you winning. Which is why when you win, yay, it's a big deal, right? Um, but as a competitive player, for example, right, you're trying to minimize those. Uh, factors that causes you to lose because there's way more factors for you losing than there are you winning. Remember, you have an opponent; they're going to do everything they can to make you lose. Right? <laughs> they're going to they're going to try to counter something. Right? They're going to try to they're going to attack something. You know, they're going to force you to combo off something good, and the list goes on and on. Right? So I want to use some of these you know decks that I'm working on to uh, help illustrate these points here. Uh, wait, then then switch. I thought I switched up to that. Let me go over here. All right, so uh, I try to main deck sideboards, or just main deck is what I call it, to make it simple, right? Some people, you know, because most players, competitive players, right, <laughs> have a side deck and a main deck. So when you use the term main decking, you know that's what they think. They think about what you main in your deck, and then that's it. Um, you know, what you mean in deck, and then, of course, you're going to have a side deck. That's the way they look at it. I mean, when I say main decking, I'm referring to the idea that I'm making sure that I have what you would classify as cards that are, you know, side deck worthy, right? Cards you would side deck, cards you would use in certain situations and certain matchups, but I would main deck. So when I say main decking, when I build decks, is essentially my main deck and my side deck fused together, right? Where my main deck is my side deck, vice versa, whichever way you want to look at it. Because I don't use a side deck, I have to main deck everything. So if I do have some cards that, that I need for specific matchups, it will be in my main deck. So it has to work in my main deck. can't just be there just, just for nothing. Granted, sometimes I would consider a card to be worthy to main deck... Because I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll need, uh, I'll need it in a certain matchup. Um, but when I'm not against that matchup, it will always be energy. I'll use gut ceiling trunks for example. I, I don't really use gut ceiling trunks like that. But let's say I had them. Let's, you know, in, a, in my blue, in my, a blue deck. All right. Well, a lot of the times I'll be charging it because I don't really use them like that. But there might be a specific matchup where it's like, yeah. Against this matchup, I need a guy sitting trunks. You know what I mean? I'm trying to think of a situation I would need a guy sitting trunks. Not every ultimate has a uh, has the flex, so I guess that's the, the one of the few occasions that I will use a guy sitting trunks would be to stop like somebody's you know ultimate. Um, yeah, yeah, you can guys in trunks, uh, baby hatch axle. So, yeah, we use like guys in trunks against baby hatch axle or something like that. But, um, those are like the rare occasions. Um, yeah, like guys in trunks, uh, topo or something like that would make sense to use. Um, use guys in trunks against topo, um, as an example. So you, you get the idea is like I would use it in certain situations or against certain decks that might. Play a certain way where it's like, yeah, I can't let that card hit the field. <laughs> so I got to God's healing trunks. Like that kind of example, but I don't really use God's healing trunks. But if I were, that, that, that would be the, what I do. And like I said, I would mainly 
charge it. So if you did see a Dago gas in trunks, know that I tend to charge it as energy more so than I would actually play it. But I might be in that one situation where I charge one gas in the trunks, I still have one in my hand, and then my opponent does something, I'm like, oh snap. Oh shit, I got guys chin trunks in my hand. This is a perfect, perfect <laughs> moment for this one card that I barely use to use it, right? Um there's times where I, I charge super combos, so that's a thing. Especially if the super combo is like multicolor, which mainly are the main super combos I use is the multicolor ones. Um, I do own the one drop super combos, except for the one drop, boo, uh, not boo, uh, one drop Zeno. Um, still gotta order it so I can have the place of it. But I have all the other one drops, and I have Shigash and uh, Kibito Kai super combo, Android 16 super combo. I have a, I have a small collection of super combos. I have the, the, the Trunks super combo, the black Trunks super combo. The old one, so I have a collection of super combos. But I mainly use Nappa, it's one of the main super combos that I use. But sometimes I use Andre 18's Bionic Blitz or uh, the Zamasu super combo because Zamasu super combo is really good because you know it's defensive capabilities. You know, you can combo it to stop one attack and then tap down one of your cards in order to you know potentially stop another attack. Ironically, it's a super combo I would use in Hatch Yak if Hatch Yak. Was a yellow or blue leader, right? Yo, imagine if they did that. Woo wee! If they made a, a, a new hatchback leader and it was like blue or yellow, but its effect was a little different. Instead of uh, a restricting. I don't know, what was I gonna say? It'll have like some type of restriction. Like some type of like attack based restriction or summoning restriction. Like it'll just make it where you can only play one battle card per turn. That'd be interesting, right? That'd be an interesting uh, restriction, just one battle card per turn. Um, so that'd be kind of cool. So if you have a lot of battle cards, you can attack with all of them, of course, but it's the idea that you can only play like one battle card uh, per turn. <sighs> Let's not give bad ideas, right? <laughs> but if they do, I'm down for it. And I would like the hatch to be blue. Mm -mm -mm. Um, so there's that. Uh, let's see. Um, all right, continuing on. So, you know, main deck and stuff. You know, stuff that a lot of times I'll, I'll, I'll play something that is useful in, situ in certain situations, but not always useful. Like, it's not generically good. Like, it's like, yeah, I wouldn't always use this card, so I would need something. So I will use it as dedicated energy. Uh, for example, it's very rare for me to have to play Android uh, 21, um, you know, Bad Omen. She is always dedicated energy, so whenever I use her in a deck, it's just because, uh, well, two things. One, because she's blue-green energy, and I want to charge her turn one as soon as possible, right? But also, it's the fact that she does have the burn effect, so that itself is a win con. So she's a win con plus... She is dedicated energy, so she serves those two purposes. I don't really use her for like her spot removal. It's not like I'm like, oh, I need her because she can, you know, get rid of a battle card. Like, nah, I don't really use her for that. Um, it can come in handy. It could be a factor in a match, but it's not why I use her. I mainly use her as dedicated energy and for her burn effect. So that's the kind of stuff I think about when I, you know, use certain cards. Uh, using cards that have multiple uses, right? That, you know, uh, that way, uh, for, ex for example, uh, let's see, like this, uh, this card obviously has three effects, right? It has the floodgate ability, so you, you, you know, always want some, some type of floodgate, some permanent ability that constantly works throughout the game, because it could make a huge difference. It, it could come in handy right at the right spot, and you want it to always be there. I'm always looking for it. Uh, floodgate effects, you know, stuff that I could always use. That's why I'm a big fan of Unisense, right? You see, I got 12 of them, right? <laughs> so these are cards that you put them on the board and they stay on the board for a pretty long while. You see, he has a plus one draw ability. That's going to help him stick on the field for a pretty long while. He's 15k, so you can use him to apply pressure. So he's an attacker, draw engine, plus he has a built in floodgate that can help you control your opponent's board. 
then he has a minus three where he can potentially board wipe. Right? Um, interesting enough, we do have a good target for this card, and that is uh, Tupper, Warrior of University 11, because he's a 20k 3 drop, which has barrier and, and dual attack, so obviously that's useful. A 20k, they can attack twice and has barrier, and it only costs three. So good, right? Um, so this with that, you can, you know, KO 20k better cards or less. So that's so that's so that's the importance of like cards that have multiple effects um, because they have multiple uses. And it's not just effects. Sometimes they're typing, you know, um, them being a, a Saiyan or or Android or you know or human, uh, you know, Earthling or something like that. Um, can be uh, can be just as important as an actual effect, right? An actual ability. Uh, barrier hate, you know, having cards that have barrier hate. Let me go here. Yeah, here's all right. Uh, barrier hate, right? So this has the active main. Choose up to two of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, and place them at the bottom of the uh, opponent's deck in any order. That's really good. I use him. Uh, uh, in a couple of different ways. I use him as board wipe, use the minus three ability, and then since he's he's a dual attacker in 20k, I can use him to knock markers off my opponent's unison, right? Knock off two markers if need be. Or um, the fact that he's a blocker, I can use it to block. Of course, I can attack, block, attack, block, because he's a dual attacker. Um, and then, of course, like I said, minus three to clear my opponent's board. I could potentially get rid of four battle cards just by using his minus three to get rid of two big battle cards with his uh, ignore barrier effect, and then swing at the other battle cards with his 20k body. You know, take advantage of that. So I could, you know, clear a board that way. He has the minus two ability where I could draw two cards, so that comes in handy against hand control. In case my opponent is making me discard cards from my hands, this is a good way to counter that, to at least try to replenish my hands. I have the I have the potential, the potential to be able to use that minus two twice, so I have the potential to draw up to four cards, not just two. But if I use the minus three, well I'm only getting that that, that effect at one time. <laughs> you know, so one time for the copy I get to I uh, get to, you know, essentially clear my point. But there's the potential of me drawing four cards off this card if I, if I use it properly. So Again, it's it's based off of you, like you as a player determine, you know, what you get the most out of when, uh, when it comes to certain cards. Um, uh, obviously, a lot of the, uh, my ideas and strategies um, are being adopted by other players, so I do notice that and I appreciate it. Glad that, you know, my experience... My ideas are of use to others, not just me. So, yeah, like I said, very hate. Gotta, gotta, gotta have some stuff with very hate. Because you never know. Uh, you know, I do play stuff that has barrier. So you definitely want to play stuff with barrier, so that way it makes it harder for your opponents to get rid of them. Which means they have to use stuff that has, that has barrier hate, right? Barrier removal. If they don't, well... You're at an advantage, and they're at a disadvantage, which is what you want. And that's the other thing about being competitive, it's not being fair. And that reminds me, small little rant. I hate this, somebody would try to argue with me, uh, or try to complain to me about the idea of me supporting using Burn and Mill as a win con, you know, and promoting that idea of using those two uninteractive um, play styles. And I'm thinking like, wait. You want your opponent to stop you from winning the game through burn? I mean, through reducing the life points to zero or the deck to zero? That defeats the purpose of having a mill deck if your opponent can stop you. Your, your opponent should try to stop you, definitely, right? Because if they don't try to stop you, they'll lose. But you, as a player, are not supposed to allow your opponent to stop you. You, as a player, are supposed to play what guarantees you the victory. See when you see, and that's where this whole bullshit of like um, playing fair and balance and all this extra bullshit. Like, no, it's no nothing. No, card games, for example, 
just like in life, it's not about fair. You know, we should have equal opportunities, right? You have a deck, I have a deck, and we battle. We both have same life points and whatnot. But if my deck is better than yours and I'm a better player than you, I'm supposed to win. It's not supposed to be, quote unquote, fair, where I'm supposed to allow you to stop me from winning. It makes no sense. I'm supposed to stop you from stopping me. Your job is to stop me from winning. My job is to win. And part of that process is stopping you from stopping me from winning. So that way I can win, which is the goal. That's the prize. That is, that is the objective. No point in playing the game if you're not going to play for that objective. Now, granted, you can say play for fun, but yeah, you can play for fun, but play with a purpose nonetheless. Purpose should be to win. If you lose and you enjoyed the game, hey, win-win, right? You could look at it that way, but your goal should be to win. Because if not, you're not actually playing the game right. Because playing to win is, is how you keep score, right? It's the goal. It's just like when you buy a video game and you play it, the goal is to is to beat the game, right? To get to the end of the game and see the whole game. Just like when you watch a movie, the goal is to get to the end of the movie. Start, you know, the movie starts, you watch the movie from the beginning to the end. There's supposed to be an end. And your goal is supposed to be to get there. So when you play, you're supposed to play to get to the end of a game. Which, whether it's you winning or you losing, you know, there's going to be an end. But your goal should be for a happy ending, right? A.K.A. you winning. So you should play to win. But it was weird for somebody to really have an issue with the idea of an uninteractive uh, win con or some type of place that where your opponent can't. Stop you. It's like, uh, I don't want my opponent stopping me. I like it when my opponent doesn't stop me. That is the goal. I'm always looking for ways to make it where my opponent can't stop me. Make the game easier for me and harder for them. I'm not supposed to make the game easy for them. That's counterintuitive. That's for all that, I might as well not play. The easiest way, the easiest thing I could do is not play the game. If I'm going to make it quote unquote fair, it's like, no, it's about being unfair, right? It's about having the advantage. So, uh, like I said, barrier hate, got to have some of that. Um, board, uh, board wipes, uh, floodgates, right? You want, you want stuff that, that lasts long. I'm always looking for stuff that sticks on the board a little bit longer. So, so, you know, battle cards that barrier. Uh, deflect tend to stick on the field a little bit longer. Uh, obviously, unisons tends to stick on the field a little bit longer. So I'm, I'm um, field cards. I'm always looking for stuff that stays on the field a little bit longer, so I can uh, get more use of them. Um, that's why I always wanted like, like when unisons became a thing. I'm like, yes, now we just need unison blockers, and I'll be happy. And then I got unison blockers because of the fact that uh, we know how unisons work, and, they st and since they stick on the field longer, having a blocker that stays on the field longer means you can block with it longer, right? You can, you can stop multiple attacks, or at least one attack a turn, right? If you have a blocker on the field that can stay on the field for a while. So, obviously, I look for that. Um, blockers with barrier because too many cards out here, too many battle cards, even leaders, have the effect of KOing your battle card, warping your battle card, stealing your battle card, <laughs> you know, so, so stealing things is a factor. Like even even Pan, Time Patrol Maiden, she can steal uh, you know, a battle card. Um Toa can steal a battle card, right? So yeah, gotta have bear. <laughs> Cause these two don't ignore bear, so since they exist, yeah, might want to have barrier. Um, like I said, board wipe. So you see, we got the fin. He's he's essentially a two drop board wipe. Uh, floodgate negates, you know, or or any or you know, like power of the people. Somewhat as a floodgate negate because of the power boost factor of it. Uh, you know, violent rays, things of that nature. Let's see if I got it. No, I got it here. Uh, but Topo, you know, obviously works as a floodgate negate if you use it at the right time. You know, things of that nature is what I, I tend to look for. Um, anything 30k and up, I mean 20k and up, 
you know, are, are the types of numbers you're trying to look for. Like, for example, this is 20K, this is 20K, um, this is 20K, this is 20K. Right, we got a couple 15Ks in here, of course. Uh, here's another 20K, here's a 25K. But we got a lot of 20K and above in the deck. A lot of the other stuff is utility, like this is a, an attacker, but it's 15K, this is an attacker, but it's 15K. This unit is an attacker, this is an attacker. Nappa, I tend to use it as an attacker. Uh, you know, Goku is an attacker. So there are some low attack cards in here, but there's largely 20k and up. Obviously, this deck is meant to be a little aggro, go a little fast. Uh, let's see what this one. This deck over here, you see, here's a 30k, here's a 30k, here's a 30k, here's a 20k. You can see you got 15, she's 20, here's 40, and him um, with two more uh, with two markers. So for two energy to play him, he's 20k, but he could also be 30k, he could be 40k, 50, 60, right? The more markers he has, the stronger he becomes, so you get the idea. But uh, typically, um, you'll want to play him for a two more, uh, you know, two energy, so that way he's a 20k, so you at least a minimum of 20k with him, so... As you can see, a lot of 20s and 30s in here, so that way you don't have to combo as much. This deck, as you can see, is uh, mono black, so you will be awakening the leader. And the leader, when the leader swings, is 20, 20k, right? So you, you see a pattern. And this is the kind of stuff I'm looking for. I definitely want to have a lot of 30ks. Maybe 35s and 40ks in in my decks if I can if I can you know, fit them in right. So those are the kind of stuff that I look for because that just re reduces how much I have to combo, but increases how much my opponent has to combo. So there's that. Then a uh, double strike and triple strike. You know, as you can see, this has double strike. Uh, this is a blocker. Uh, oh. Pretty much it, the only one that has, uh, this one has, yeah, this only one that has double strike. Um, but everything else is uh, single strike. Yep. Nothing, nothing here has extra attacks. So a lot of single strike stuff, except for this one, which is double strike. Um, but, but what's cool about him is that he gains triple attack, so you could potentially attack three times with him and potentially do six damage with him. So he's the main reason I built the deck. And then I just added all these other Goku. So uh because you know because because right no I'm kidding. <laughs> because uh you know I'm a fan of this you know version of Goku. And just wanted to make something that looks cool, something different. You know different Hatchiac build. So going with the Goku Zeno build. This is my my heart. My, my more updated uh, Janim, uh, Hatchet Janimba Mel deck got Demigra and Sin Shenron for further mill, as well as, of course, Oceanus in there, along with the Janimba Unison. And, you know, leading towards mill with the deck. And then we got some some, some hand control. And then, of course, Demigra also helps with uh, uh, you know, some hand control. Did I say mill? With him, <laughs> I meant uh, uh, he helps with hand control. With him, uh, Black Man saying, you know, these two help with some hand control. While Oceanus and Shenron and uh, Janimba helps with uh, with milling, because it's not enough to just you know mill your opponent. You want to make sure the opponent has very low cards in the hands that they can use, so that way it slows them down. So doing a little bit of hand control. Of course, there's some board control in here due to the effects of Toa. Uh, go, uh, you know, go tanks. Uh, you know, photon wave. So we got some board wipe there. We got the fin board wipe. You know, and we got the floodgate negate over here. We got the senzo bean, which acts like a floodgate negate. You know, because of giving our leader the power boost. Uh, yes, we do not awaken uh, the leader in this build. We do try to charge blue energy as soon as turn one. So we are not awakening the leader in this build. We have food in order to help us re uh, reuse our like Oceanus 
or help us get um, anything else uh, you know we need in case some of our stuff gets sent to the drop we can always get it, get it back mainly it's just sorry it's just another way of getting Oceanus back from Jack because we'll use it to negate an attack then we we'll use it to block so that means to go back you know to the drop and then we we'll use food for two energy to add it back to our hand and then we could use two energies to play this on opponent's turn along with you know uh discarding the four star ball for it and using Goku Venture begins to recycle a four star ball. So there's a little basic little uh engine there. So it's a way to stop two attacks per turn through that on top of the uh Radish Giant Force, you know, um blocking. So you wanna set that up and then eventually you wanna get a Shenron out there and start getting his uh milling ability. Uh, his uh, spirit boost mill effect going off on um, your turn and your opponent's turn, so that way you're milling opponent um, two cards a turn. So let's see, uh, and, and a good uh, source for uh, markers would be a Toa because you use Toa to get rid of a battle card. Three costs or less to gain a marker, right? And then remove the the marker for um, since Shenron's uh, negative energy explosion effect. Uh, you know his uh, spirit boost and make your opponent mill the card. Um, plus he's a you know deflect barrier blocker with double strike, so you could take advantage of that. But the main thing you want to take advantage of is the fact that he is a blocker, so you can potentially block more of an attack. And using stuff like the four star ball to try to keep him out on the field longer. So it kind of acts like a uh, like a deadly defender in a way uh, while milling. So you'd be blocking, milling, blocking, milling. So the goal is to try to get him out there and try to keep him out there. And that's where the deflecting barriers comes into play. Um, let's see. So let's just move on with the list. So, like I said, double strike, triple strike, quadruple strike, dual attack, triple attack, you know, the more attacks, the better. You want stuff that can attack multiple times, things that can make uh, tokens or help you go wide, as they say. All right, those are kind of things I look into. Uh, barrier blockers or unison blockers, because unison blockers, you know, essentially are barrier blockers, right? Because your opponent pretty much can't interact with them. And barrier blockers are blockers that, that are, it's hard for your opponent to interact with. So. I look for that. So, always looking for permanent or reusable defense is what I call it. Uh, free play cards, you know, obviously anything like Overrealm, you know, stuff you can play for free. Um, you know, stuff that if you meet the condition, you can play for free, like Pan Time Patrol Maiden, you could you could play for free. Stuff they call Zero, you know, you could play for free. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, being able to play stuff for cheap is useful. Uh, you know, we got buy a lot bodyguard legend. You could play for free. You could play Goku One Hit Wonder for free. You know, if you meet the condition to to play for free. So, you know, like I said, Overrun, some parts Rage War Cry doesn't cost no energy to play. You just need four or more cards in your drop in order to Overrun and play this for free. Uh, Napoli you combo it and then play for free, so you get that idea. So we got like 12 cards in here, you know, you could potentially, uh, well, 16 cards you could potentially play for free um, in this deck. So that's the kind of stuff I'm looking for. Uh, floodgates, negates, like the Topo or Violent Rays or anything of that nature. You know, power, you know, protect other people that has a a pan, you know, that has a floodgate negate ability. So just, you know, Oceanus. Things that can help you, uh, you know, survive a turn. Uh, floodgate negates, time walk, whatever you want to call it. I sometimes refer to that. It's like, I just need a card that helps me get to the next turn. And if, it only, and if it's only one card that I have to use to get that next turn, even better. I don't want to use, like, four or five cards from my hand just try and survive a turn. I'd rather play one card and survive the turn, right? Play one card and shut my opponent down and, and get that extra turn so I can get that extra battle phase and the 
extra draw, the extra energy, and the extra, you know, extra everything. An extra turn, you know, it's an extra chance of winning. So I'm always looking for that. Uh, deflect finishers, obviously, <laughs> again, you don't want your win condition to be interactive. Imagine if your opponent could uh, stop your Android 17 turn attack with God to think about how retarded that would be. Like, it wouldn't be a good card, right? It wouldn't be a popular card. It wouldn't be considered, you know, in, you know, skillless win con if you could just God seal it, right? You know, if you, if you could easily interact with it, is what I'm saying, because God seal like that, so obviously that's for another conversation, but really, a, f a card you could play for free to stop your opponent from playing. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's for a different conversation, but, you know, again, right, it's like, because God Ceiling Trunks is a thing, I try to make sure that whatever I use, especially if it's a win con, has to be, um, uh, has to be God Ceiling Trunks uh, proof, as it were, right? Has to have deflect. Now, if we look in here, I, I doubt anything here has a deflect specifically. Um, this here has barrier. Uh, this has a flag, the board wipe, so at least my board wipe, you know, stuff like that, like, you want your board wipe, right, to have, to have the flag, your, your, your win con finisher, if it's, if it's attack based, um, to, to have the flag, uh, so, that kind of stuff. Uh, but this is why I use, uh, uh, I do have, you know, a good amount of unisons. In this one, you notice there's only eight unisons instead of 12, but, you know, um, a lot of times my unisons are my win cons because they can't be God Sealed Trunks, right? So since they can't be God Sealed Trunks, they can't be Charismatic than Frieza, right? These are things I could play and go for game with. So usually if they have a built-in win con, you know, like like the Janimba, which has the minus two active main slash battle ability. If your opponent has fifteen or less cards in their deck, this card gains fifteen k power and triple strike for the turn. So it becomes a thirty k triple strike. So you can attack with it. Thirty k triple strike. Dump your hand into it, and you know get it up to like sixty sixty k and above, and end your opponent out. Because usually you want to point to have uh, six or less cards in the hands uh, by the time you you know try to pull that off. Um, multi win cons, right? You want to have um, more than one win con. I always try to have more than one way to win. I don't want to just have one way of winning, one little gimmicky way of winning, as it were. Because um, that's you know tends to separate competitive from casual. Is that you know, casual players tend to have like maybe one win condition, like one cool card that they 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 will try to use to win. Like a like a can I use that as an example? I don't know, Victory Strike Goku or something like that, or a, or one of their ultimates. Like let's say they have a, a Cell Zeno or something, so they'll try to you know win 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 off of that. Um, but, you know, it's only one copy of the card, so the likelihood of you drawing it and then having enough cards to play it, you know, it requires a lot to, to, to make it work. Um, that's why I try to make sure that my deck has a lot of different cards that I can use as a win con. Like, for example, I can use Gold Tanks as a win con because he's a dual attacker and he starts off base power 20. And he has a minus 2 where I could draw 2 cards. So I could play him for four, minus two to draw two cards, and then swing at my opponent. They negate the first attack, that's fine. I'll swing again. They don't stop the second attack, dump my hand into the attack and go for game. Especially if they only have one life. You know, right? And I still would have like a leader swing, you know, if I if I awaken in this deck, I don't awaken, but you get the idea. Um, you know, so there's that. Then there's obviously the Janimba where you can make him a triple strike. You know. <sighs> And we got uh, Shenron, he's 20k double strike, so you can, and he has barrier, you know, which definitely can be relevant um, in certain matchups. So he's a win con. And then we have, uh, you know, Demon God Demigra, you know, which can, you know, he, he is overrun. Um, 
5 and Darko Rome uh, 5. Um, so obviously you can, you know, play them out for just 2 energy and then, uh, you know, um, sw you know, swing with them, um, swing with a unison and go in, you know, and do a lot of damage. So you could play him along with, uh, you know, gold tanks and get a, you know, try to get a lot of attacks to go through and finish your point off that way. He has a 30k body, so he already, already starts off with a good number to, to work off off of. Your opponent's going to need 20 combo power just to try to stop his attack at base power. So throw in some combo and, you know, increase your chances of dealing the last damage with it. Plus, he also has the effect that when this card attacks, the opponent chooses one card from the hand and sends it to warp. So that's already reducing one combo power from the hand. More likely, it's going to be a card that either doesn't have combo power or has 5k combo power because they're not going to warp a super combo or anything that has 10k unless they're tapped out and the 10k they can't use, so they'll warp that. You get the idea. If they have any um, super combos, they're going to keep it. Um, and they're definitely going to keep. Um, as many 5k combo power as they can. So keep that in mind. A little pro tip there. And he also has the condition that uh, when this card is played using Overrun or Dark Overrun, draw a card, then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and send it to warp. So that could potentially reduce some combo power if they have a battle card that they would have used for combo. You can you know get rid of it or get rid of a blocker so they can't use the blocker to block. Um, also, you have the fact that you draw a card when you play him through overround, and then remember when you attack your opponent, uh, warps a card from their hand, so you're potentially getting rid of roughly maybe I'll say 10k combo power by by doing that by overwhelming him and then swinging with him, and then you did gain you did draw a card. Let's say it's a 5k combo power, so you gain 5k, and you reduce them by 10k. So technically, it's kind of like you. You, you gain 15 combo power in just playing him and swinging with him. Right? And that's not to mention the fact that if you combo him with uh, gold tanks, you know, getting that two extra you know, draw, which could be an extra 10k combo power, you know, um, and you, you know, you're going from there. So that's an extra potential 25k, 15 plus 10k, so that's 25k, potential 25k extra combo power. Just by playing these two cards at the same turn for six energy, right? So there's that. Let's see what else is on the list. Um, yeah, like I was saying, like you know, the idea of multiple win cons. I mean, even using Toa to take your opponent's battle card or his win con and use it against them, right? You know, where you maybe you. You, you you did dirty burst to prevent them from attacking with with their like uh, seven costs or higher uh, battle card that they were planning to um, attack you with right that turn and then you'd be like all right my turn drop this with four markers swing with it because it is a twenty k body take advantage of that then do the minus four take your opponent's uh, battle card and then swing with their battle card and win and beat them that way so you know. It's, it's how you use your cards that determine, you know, uh, their use in a match. But as you can see, I can use her as spot removal. I can use her to steal my opponent's blocker and use my opponent's, you know, uh, blocker, you know, battle card to defend myself with. Or use it as a finisher, right? Use my opponent's battle card to help me finish out the game. So, things of that nature. So, gotta have more than one win cone. And not much else in this deck when it comes to win comp, right? Uh, let's go over here. Uh, we have burn as a win con. Um, this right here is a win con um, because of his active main um, minus four ability, where he gets uh, 15k power, so he becomes 40k, and he'll be triple strike for the turn. And at the end of the turn, switch the cards to active mode because he is a blocker. So, <clears throat> so he's already dual attack. So he can already attack twice, so that's already good as a finisher. Then he's a unison, so he's immune to casting the trunks and charismatic and freeze and blah blah blah, right? All the typical stuff and um and, and you know anything that would try to steal him during battle, blah blah blah. You get the idea. He's pretty much immune to 
everything in the game. So, so, he, so he's. So, uh, Green is a finisher, right? Because of that, and because of his effect of becoming a uh, 40k triple strike, and he's already dual attack, so he could potentially do six damage all by himself. So, so that, so he's a win con. This doing his minus five ability when your opponent doesn't have any battle cards in play, you can deal your opponent one damage. And the way, and and the way this leader works, this leader has the active battle ability of placing two cards from my life into the drop to choose all my opponent's battle cards, right? In and my battle cards, ignoring barrier, which is very important, right? Place them into the owner's drop. Place them, right? Not KO. Place them. So this will clear the board, right? Ignoring barrier, which is always important, right? And then. <clears throat> Since there, my opponent doesn't have no battle cards, I could play this for uh, five energy, four minimum, four red, of course. Play it for five energy. Um, if my opponent still has life points, you know it is a twenty k body go swing. You know, dump my hand into his attack, and you know try to try to bring my opponent down to one life. So that way I can do this card's ability to uh, minus five and finish them off uh, in that scenario. If then if they are not already. Um, dead, 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 I say. Um, obviously, something you can do to be a little uh, strategic, depending on the situation, especially if your point size energy. Play this for fire, right? Swing with it, right, first. Your opponent probably try to do some arrival plays or something along those lines. Maybe they have the ability to drop a Topo or Heroic Videl or something like that. Like, you get the idea they they, they, they play some stuff in their hands. There are battle cards on your turn to try to survive. Right? Well, after they do that, right, <laughs> you can just use uh, Goku's ability to clear the board just so you can, you know, do the minus five ability and burn your points for game, you know, that kind of stuff. So something you can, you can take into consideration. Because you don't want to what I'm saying is you don't want to do the board wipe effect first and then try to go for game, you know, and, and attack. And then if they drop a battle card, it's like, oh, now I can't do the minus ability. So, so swing with the unison first, get, get, try to get, a, a, you know, damage out of it. Then clear the board and then finish them off with a burn. So, so these are two cards, you know, that you can use as your win con. Also, this has the ability that when you play this uh, ultimate, it board wipes minus 25k to all your points. Uh, yeah, 25k to all your points. Battle cards, so that right there is relevant. So this, you know, already can can help you set up for uh, playing this the following turn in case your opponent doesn't play anything. So that's a possibility. Or just clean the, the board so that way you can attack and not worry about a clapback. Uh, this is a win con because this can make three tokens. And if you have four or less cards in your hands, the tokens and this card gets double strike. So that's Potential eight damage with that, you know what I mean? Uh, this, you know, again, you know, because it's you know overall right, since it's free play. After you attack with everything, your opponent out combos like, all right, cool, I survived. Overall, right? I, I tend to do that a lot. Um, a lot of us tend to do that a lot, right? You know, opponent think they survive, and then we just drop overall and go for game. So obviously that's a win con. This is a win con. This is a win con. That's a win con. So I have five, nine, not five, four, no, five, eight. So that's thir okay, four, 12, 13, yeah, 13 uh, in cons right there. Um, I mean, you know, not, not to mention the fact that, you know, just attacking with a lot of stuff and even using <clears throat> any of my battle cards uh, with Hidden um, Power, Easy Pink Card, you know, can obviously be a, a win con, you know, throw in the. The super combo on top of anything that I attack with, and that can be a win con. So you get that idea. So multiple ways I can go for game, you know, is something you want to consider. Uh, this has barrier and dual attack, so since it's a, a, du a three drop dual attack uh, 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 
unison, so to speak, because of its uh, barrier. It's not immune to Gatsby and Trunks, but, you know, you get the idea. It does have the auto that when this card is played, choose up to two of your opponent's battle cards, and they get negative 15k power for the turn. So it has uh, a way of potentially getting rid of blockers or somewhat a, a way of kind of clearing the board. So that's the thing I like about it is that it is a battle card version of... You know of some 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 unisons that I would I would use in that same regards. It's kind of like a, a battle card version of uh, Gotenks in a way, because Gotenks is 20k dual attack, and he has the minus three ability to get rid of up to two battle cards. So it's kind of like a red version of that in a way. So so moving on, what else we got? I try to avoid multicolors. Um, what I mean by that is not not necessarily multicolored cards per se, um, but try to avoid uh, mixing colors like you know black and blue, for example. Try to, but if it works, it works, right? Uh, but I try to go, as you can see here, I try to go kind of mono red, but you see there's some black and there's some red green. But I try to I try to go mono colors. Let's see if this one and this one's just you know mono, mono black. So I try to. I try to avoid um, using cards that require different colors, you know, uh, or try to avoid having different types of colors in a deck because if you don't charge the right energy at the right time, because um, maybe you didn't draw the right energy at the right time, it's like, oh man, you know, there's two cards I want to play, but I, I need one extra green and I don't have the one extra green to play it or something. You don't want to be in that type of scenario. That's why sometimes you also have to look at the cost of the cards. Um, like this one right here, he has two specified reds, and then this Gotenks um, <clears throat> has three specified reds. So just like this has four specified reds, this has four. Uh, no, yeah, this has four specified reds. This one over here has two, and then even Bodyguard Legic has two. But you can play them for free, so that's a little irrelevant. But you get the idea that there are. A lot of costs. Even hidden power has two. Um, even Napa, his color is split red and green. So you get the idea. It's like well, most of the stuff you can play for free, so it's not that big of a deal. And this deck can definitely play these cards. But you know, you you want to look at those factors. You want to look at uh, how much it will cost to play something, and you usually want it to be. Uh, mono color, so you don't have to worry about uh, trying to figure out which how how you should charge your energy. You know, it's just be whatever. If you have an extra copy of something, charge that as energy. As you see, my uh, my rule of thumb is if I have two uh, topos, I'll charge one. Right, that kind of stuff. I'd rather keep both, <laughs> but a lot of times I will have to I will have to I have to give one up. Uh, check to see if super combos are useful in the build. This is something, ironically, I do a lot. Some people don't think that. A lot of people think that I just choose not to play super combos, period. When that's not the case, it's that I check to see if the deck uh, needs a super combo. Like it's like Like, it's really, really important because... Whatever the super combo does, like Nappa, you know, Nappa's in here because I need his, you know, ability to combo for free and become, you know, and, and be a 10k body uh, for early game aggro as well as, you know, for the combo power. There's actually a a, a decent decent strategy for because uh, he combos well, right? Combos, right? Because he's super combo. If you have two Nappas and you have a uh, Ghost Attack Trunks, you can actually make it where um, um, all your tokens plus uh, your Go Tanks will be uh, will be stronger by 10k. Because right, you'll use one Nappa Super Combo on your first 15k uh, token, right? So that so you turn it to a 25k Double Strike because you should have four or less cards in your hands, right? So just just go tanks and two super uh, two uh, nappas will be enough for you to swing with one token twenty five k right then nappa hits the field in active mode right so that means you can't count one from the field right 
<coughs> use him for the next token. So another 25k double strike. Then on the third token attack, use an another Nappa from your hand. Bang, another 25k. Nappa um, hits the field from the, from the drop. And then you swing with uh, Go Tanks and combo. And now you have a 30k double strike. A uh, Go Tanks for the final final attack, right? Or at least you, you, you're attempting to. Because <laughs> with you doing double strike, double strike, double strike, the opponent's hand is getting a, a, a mighty thick. Um, right, but the fact that all your attacks are over 20k and then your last attack is a 30k, and this is without you even comboing, in case you have like two other cards in your hands, that's without even comboing any other cards in your hands to get this card up to a high attack. Um, plus, it depends on how you play it if you're being slick and strategic, because what you can do is obviously do that stuff I was saying and then. Once you have like two or less cards in your hands, right, then activate the effect of like King Piccolo, for example, to draw a card. Um, you see, because I think the leader has, yeah, the leader burst three, draw a card. So you can do th those two things, right, and add two more cards in your hands on top of the fact that let's say you already had two cards in your hands. So now you have four cards that you can combo into uh, Ghost Attack Trunks uh, uh, attack. And let's say they're all 5Ks. So that's an extra 20k on top of the fact that he's already 30. So you can make a 50k double strike on the final attack. So it just, again, depends on how you use these cards that determine uh, what you can do, the outcome, right? And, um, but yeah, like when it comes to super combos, I, I always check first to see, do I need super combos in the deck? Like, what is it that I'm trying to do with the deck? And can a super and you know would a super combo be uh, uh, helpful if I'm making a very defensive blue deck, yellow deck? Then yeah, fuse um, the super super the Zamasa super combo will be useful if I'm doing a bunch of hand control in blue or green, or I'm doing blue green hand control, right? Then Android 18 Bionic Blitz will be the super combo I will use if you know the strategy uh, warrants it. Especially if I have a combo with it, like if I have a strategy to use super combo other than, oh, it's zero cost 10k, just throw it in because it's zero cost 10k. Like, no, there has to be a purpose. I have to be able to justify it being a deck other than zero cost 10k because then for all that, I could just use any generic random super combo, you know, if all I need was zero cost 10k, which I don't really need that much. I don't need that condition as much as I would need anything else. The Supreme Kyle would need more because it gives me the double strike plus the 10k. I need that more, the double strike part. The 10k is obviously helpful to help push the attack through, but the double strike is what's really important, especially early game. You know what I mean? A Nappa with the leader turn one, for example, it's nice, but it's only one damage. A e Supreme Kai with the leader on turn one it's too damage. That's better. To me, if dealing my opponent, dam more damage is more important than getting 10k for free. Like, I have no problem paying for 10k as long as it comes with double strike, a side order of fries, a big booty hole. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like, I'd rather, I rather, I'll pay for quality. I'll pay for more because I want more. Um, another thing, you know. Like I said, with this, see, a super combo won't, won't be won't be that will be all right, but it won't be that helpful against like a unison. But a Supreme Kyle and giving me double strike against a unison would definitely uh, come in handy. And that extra 10k might might be important, especially if the unison I'm using is a 10k. Like let's say I have uh, Goku Junior, and my opponent has a 20k unison, then. You know, having E Supreme Kai giving me the 10k plus the double strike, so I can knock off two markers. You know that that is that is relevant. You know that matters, and that's a two two energy. Uh, um, damn, what was that term? Two energy commitment right there. That's just a two energy commitment right there. You know, I can I can as soon as turn two. You know, I can I can knock off two markers off of a 20k unison. You know what I mean? So there's that. I mean, doesn't you know, 
that, but doesn't hurt in certain situations, obviously. Um, but just saying is like, I, I have to weigh. The unisons have to have an effect that is of use that helps support. Because a lot of cards I use on my deck have effects, right? They have their uses. This is nice because it, you know, I can use I use it to negate attack, and then it's a zero cost five k combo bar. So I get two potentially. I can stop two attacks with, for one energy. She negates an attack, and I can use it to combo for five. So I could stop a battle, uh, like a unison swing or a battle card swing with her, her ability to negate an attack. And then if my opponent attacks with their 15k leader to my 15k leader and they don't combo, then I'll just combo her off and bang, there, I just stopped a leader swing. So I stopped two attacks off of one energy. So that, you know, is relevant, right? That matters. So that's why I use her, even though she only has 1k power, <laughs> she serves a purpose. Uh, you know, by your legend, he's a blocker. That's always useful. The ability to stop and, uh, you know, flat out stop a whole attack, attacking my leader, right? But it's a 15k body, which can help me apply pressure. And this with an Easy Supreme Kai is a 25k double strike as soon as turn one. Yes, that's delicious. <laughs> um, shit, with a, with a Nappa, that's a 35k double strike. With a side order of an extra 10k swing at your opponent, right? Um, so it just depends how you use them that determines what you get out of them. And like I said, Nappa actually has use with Ghost Attacks. It has a lot of use with a lot of the cards in this deck. So that's why, yes, that's why it's in there. Because I can use it. It has a lot of uses beyond the 0 10k. Most Super Combos are only useful as a 0 10k. Nappa is a 10k body on top of the fact that it's 0 10k. So, it's a, it's the super of all the super combos because it uh, serves purposes beyond just combo power. Because um, I actually literally combo it with other cards, so it literally is a super, super combo. Everything else is just, huh, it's a combo card. Um, let's see. Can't think of anything else at the moment that, um, I use. Well, obviously, I try to min uh, uh, I, I consider early game, mid game, late game. That's usually why I have, you know, three different unisons. You know, this is early game, you know, early game aggro turn one. Try to go, try to do four or more damage on turn one with this. Uh, this, you know, obviously, my turn two play or turn three. Uh, you know, floodgate draw engine, and of course, potential board wipe. Um, and then, of course, this is my late game uh, unison. You know, because of its minus one, so I can you know, it, uh, eke, eke out a win, right? Try to get my win um, through burn. You know, an uninteractive win cone, which is what you want. You don't want your opponent to stop you from winning, right? And then, you know, we got a couple other win cons here that you know we could potentially use to. Uh, when so always trying to you know you know plan from turn one to whatever turn I feel I might end up in. Clearly, this is this deck is meant to go to turn five for ghost attack, go to five for uh, go hanks, so um, go five for the Vegito. So this is definitely you know. A deck that wants to go to turn five to you know to try to go to try to go for game. The sooner you go for game, the better, of course. But this is definitely a turn five for all these, you know, other win cards. So there's that. Ooh, sorry. <coughs> so there's that. Um, what else? Um, anti hand control. You know, I try to look. Uh, you know, obviously affects that. I try. I try to look for cards that also have the ability to draw. That they could also potentially be a draw engine instead of just relying on my leader drawing or drawing for my my turn. Which ironically, when you draw for turn, that's actually just you're drawing energy. You're not really drawing anything to play per se. You're just drawing something you're going to potentially charge or replace something hand that you're going to charge. So your draw phase is usually to help you 
uh, I guarantee you have a car to charge for energy. Uh, another thing, at some point you have to figure out uh, how much, what's your max energy, right? How much, like, typically most, for me, the, the maximum will be like 5 energy. Like for this deck, I shouldn't need any more than 5 energy. You know? Unless I'm trying to do like a uh, Toa and Finn combo where I need 4 energy for her and 2 for him. So that way he can limit my opponent down to 1 creature and then use Toa to steal it. And I need 4 energy for her and 2 for him. So that would be 6. So at most, I might go to 6 just so I can do this 2 card combo. Um, or uh, play this for four, and then have two energy up for uh, Oceana. So typically, a maximum of six energy is all I would need for this deck. So anything after, once I get to six energy, I don't need to charge anymore. I just keep on, you know, whatever I draw, I, I get to use. And usually that's what you want. You want to build a deck, or at least try to build a deck, where the cost of what you play is so low, like three energy or less, that you don't need to charge anything more than three energy or less. And I have the strategy I'm working on later on. It's an old strategy that I used before, uh, but definitely now it's more viable. Like I'll, I'll definitely be able to do it more now than before, which is the one energy deck strategy. Some of y'all who follow my old content, you know, from way back then, not content, you know, videos from way back then, remember one of my old strategies of the one energy deck. Yeah, a lot of people really enjoyed laughing at that deck. But it worked. Was it perfect? No. <laughs> right? Because, you know, there's way better stuff now than it was back then. But it's like, yeah, but it was, it, but the concept is good. Ironically, uh, ideally what I wanted is the deck to not require energy at all. So you're never charging energy. So you're never charging energy. So whatever, so whatever you draw, you get to keep, you know, and all that good stuff, right? So that was the idea. And and then everything you play, obviously, the idea is for to play for free. Um, but the best I can do is like one to two energies. Like you you only need a, a maximum of one or two energies. Like you shouldn't need any more energy than that to be able to play the deck uh, effectively. Because there is a lot of one and two drop cards that you can play. Like once you play them, they put in work. Like there's some really good two drop unisons. There's some really good one drop uh, floodgate negates, uh, two drop uh, floodgate negates, <clears throat> two drop board wipe. You, you, get, you get what I'm saying? You get the point. Um. So, like for example, I could I could just say like if I were to tweak this deck, I can make this deck into like a one energy uh, type of deck, a deck where I only need one energy. Because think about it. the Toa, you could play her for one energy. The, the 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 Broly, um, where is he? Like the Broly Unison, right? You could play him for one energy. The Goku, you can play for one energy. This Goku, energy, right? You can play this for free. You can play her for free, right? You just need four more. The Negates are, are just one energy, right? Um, this un, under the right conditions only costs one energy, right? So you could. Play a deck for just like one energy of everything, but we don't have one. Uh, well, technically, we do have a one energy blocker unison that's black, but yeah, you got a spirit boost and stuff like that. And the cards that have the spirit boost mechanic are not one energy, so can't do that. But you get the idea. Is that you know you could try to play a deck with a lot of one. Uh, you know, you could play a deck with one or two energy only. Like you don't need more than that. Um, especially if they, if they're you know really good effects. Because typically on your opponent's turn, what you really want to play is a floodgate negate anyway. Drop of violent rage or a flying nimbus or something on your opponent's turn. Or for two energies, you know, drop a topo right and bang, there you go. That should be enough for you to. You know, not have to do anything that turn, and just your opponent would just be like, "All right, end my turn." It's like, good. That's what I want. For two energy, end of your turn. Right? For one energy, end of your turn. Shouldn't need uh, a lot of energy um, for that to happen. <clears throat> and then, if you if you could play stuff free on your turn, your opponent's turn is always you know gravy, right? As I say, it's always what you want. You know, that's where Bodyguard Legend comes in. Obviously, that'd be one of the cards in the deck. Uh, Napa would be another free play. Overall, be another free play card. You want to you want to play. 
because you know these types of cars, uh, you know, barely you know barely cost any energy. Um, the 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 negates I don't have any in here, right? I don't have anything uh, there. I don't have it there. No. Um, I like testing opposition. You know, if you have five or less life, or the sparking negates. Do I have sparking negates here? It's the power of people. Oh, no, no. I said power people. I mean uh, power person. I'm not using power person either. One of these decks, hatchet decks. But you get the idea. It's like you know, you know, dimension magic stuff like that. Like things you can you can potentially play for free just by meeting the criteria. Um, so, and I do have a folder full of stuff I could play for free. A lot of really good um, one energy uh, cards. So it wouldn't be that hard to put together a one energy. Um, deck, which you know is something I always wanted to be able to do. Uh, more than, you know, more than that, you know, one time, obviously. Let's see how far this has gone. All right, I talked long enough, and that's the end of the video.